Adobe Camera Raw 15.4 just added a great new capability to export AVIF images. In this video, you'll learn how you can use it with WebSharp Pro version 5.6 to export any image as a much smaller AVIF file, as well as how to automatically enhance its dynamic range. To use these new capabilities, make sure you get the latest version of Adobe Camera Raw, which needs to be 15.4 or later. And then for WebSharp Pro, you'll need version 5.6 or later. Just go to the settings for the panel, go to the file tab, and in the options for standard images under format, you would typically have JPEG set, but now we have this new option for AVIF via Adobe Camera Raw. When you select this, you're now gonna get an AVIF image, which is typically gonna be about 30% smaller than a JPEG, but sometimes as much as 85% smaller than a comparable JPEG at similar or even better quality. We'll go ahead and click done. I'm not gonna use any watermarks, borders, or other fancy features. I'm just gonna export this image as is, at 1400 pixels wide and 100% sharpening amount. So click sharpen, it's gonna process the image and then it's gonna open it up in Adobe Camera Raw. And the reason we're in here is not so we can change the image, it's so that we have access to this button to save through Adobe Camera Raw. This is not something which is scriptable because it's not natively part of Photoshop, but WebSharp Pro is teeing up everything you need and you just have to click the button here to go ahead and save. Now in this dialog, you would choose where you wanna export set a file name, I'm just gonna select it and hit Command V. And the reason this works is WebSharp Pro has copied the file name you need to the clipboard. So if you just select the file name and hit paste, that is Command or Control V, you'll automatically update the file name. Then choose your file format, which should be set to AVIF, but there are multiple different options. And then set your quality. Anything between eight and 10 is usually a great choice, and I think eight works very well. Down in the color space area, you wanna check this option to enable HDR display if you're exporting HDR, but we're not. My image is a standard image, so I wanna leave this unchecked, and I'm gonna go and choose to export as sRGB. For the image size, you can ignore this because WebSharp Pro is already taking care of it for you, and same with output sharpening because WebSharp Pro already took care of that. So we'll just click save, and it's been saved as an AVIF. And for comparison, let's go save one more time. This time, let's go and choose a JPEG. And notice that my default is a little bit higher for quality at 10 because JPEG tends not to have the same quality as AVIF and I need to push the numbers a little bit higher. So I'm gonna choose 10 for my JPEG. Still not saving as HDR, still not choosing any options to resize or sharpen since it's already been done. And go ahead and click save. And I'll hit okay and the export is done. And here you can see we've got our two exports. Notice that the AVIF is half the size of the JPEG. So it's a tremendously smaller file Let's go and open these up in Photoshop and just compare them. So notice the AVIF gets opened up through ACR. So we'll just open the object here, but here is my AVIF version of the image. I'm gonna hit Command C to copy it. And here's the JPEG that opened up. Notice that it didn't get opened up in ACR because it didn't need to. But now we can compare these two. I'm gonna zoom in to something like 800% here and just see how these compare. If we go look at, here's the JPEG, and here's the AVIF. I would say that there's no real difference in quality here, but if I had to choose, the AVIF is definitely better. If we zoom in even closer, you may be able to see this on the web here where here's the JPEG, looks a little bit noisy, and the AVIF is just a cleaner image. But you know we're at 3,200% here, it's totally absurd. At any normal viewing distance, the AVIF it looks, I'd say, equivalent to the JPEG here, and yet it's half the size. We have a much smaller file. so. That's really the benefit here is the ability to have faster page loads, better search rankings, and all the benefits of smaller images. Now I mentioned there's a second benefit in WebSharp Pro version 5.6, and to get to it, we're gonna go back to settings, go to the file tab again, and in the options here, you see this new checkbox for enhance SDR to HDR. That means enhance from a standard dynamic range image, those are the images you're used to in eight or 16-bit formats, and enhance it to a 32-bit high dynamic range format. When you check this, various options for SDR go away because we're now using the options for HDR. That is, this image is going to be converted to HDR and enhanced and then saved with these options. So for my HDR format, I'm gonna change this to also be AVIF via Adobe Camera Raw. So we'll use the same export here and I'm ready to go. Let's click done. I'll click on sharpen. So it's gonna resize and enhance the image as an HDR. It's already looking better. I can see mid-process here. Notice it's marked as an HDR file. And I'm gonna go and click to save this image. Once again, I could select and paste, but it's the same name here. Choose my output folder. 
Make sure my format is set to AVIF. This time we're saving in HDR, so we need to make sure Enable HDR Display is turned on. And I would say HDR P3 is a great choice here. Not necessary, but it's safe to choose a wider gamut. If a browser supports HDR, it's going to support P3. And again, leave the other options off. Click Save, and we're done. We've now exported an improved image. Let's go take a look at how that compares. Notice it's a little bit smaller than our SDR image, so there's no downside to HDR. In some cases, it might even be smaller. I'm going to double click to open it up. And I'm just going to make it full size here and then just tab between the two. So here's my original source image with all the layers. And here's my new HDR, which as you can see is a much better looking version of the image because it's expanded into the high dynamic range. To compare that a little more closely, let's look at our original here. I'm going to hit I for the eyedropper and just watch the info panel here. On the left hand side are 8 bit measurements, and on the right are the 32 bit measurements. When I'm hovering over the sun, I've got 8-bit measurements near 255. That's the absolute limit for an SDR image. And in HDR terms, that would be 1.0. Or in 32-bit terms, it's a 1.0. So we can't get any brighter than this for a standard image. But when we create a high dynamic range image, notice the 8-bit numbers are meaningless here because they get clipped in the readout. But the 32-bit numbers are now showing as high as 6.1. So we are multiple stops above the regular limit for white in SDR. That's what's going on here. We have a much brighter sun. We have much brighter colors to get brighter than any paper white you would normally see. And that's how HDR is able to give us this much better looking image. And you can automatically create this from any image just by turning on this option. So that means your stock photos, your images out of mid journey, your existing edits, they can all look better by just turning on this option and then saving the output as an AVIF to share online. If you're on Windows, you're also going to see another option to export AVIF via plugin. My recommendation would be to export using that third party plugin when you're exporting an SDR image. And then if you're exporting an HDR, use Adobe Camera Raw. That's where each of these are their strongest. But if you're on Mac, you won't have that option. So you should always choose the ACR option for either format. Now to learn more about HDR, click on this next video.